After building over 100 workflows using NAN, I finally cracked the code to five minute email management from two hours down to just five minutes daily. Today, you'll get my exact setup that auto generates drafts exactly in your voice. It handles all your document processing and sends you an urgent message if an urgent email comes in. I'll show you how to build this using OpenRouter and Gmail, zero coding needed. And if you stick around until the end, you'll see exactly how to deploy this today using mostly free tools. I'm gonna to show you in the next 45 seconds exactly the kind of responses that this auto emailer will send for you. And you can tailor this exactly to your voice. So we're gonna jump into the uh, inbox here and we've received an email about upcoming videos. So it's just a simple test message, but hey, Simon, can you let me know what templates and videos you have upcoming? Could we meet to discuss? So immediately I'm thinking, okay, they've asked a question, so we do need to respond to this. And they've also asked to put in a meeting in the diary. So our email draft here is gonna read these, work out whether it needs to respond, whether it's urgent, and whether we could meet to, and whether there are further actions to take. And you can see it's responded here or drafted a response for us. Hey, Tom, thanks for reaching out. So this is, it, by the way, exactly how I would respond. It copies the tone of the email received. So thanks for reaching out. For upcoming content, I'd need to check my current production schedule to give you accurate information. So again, it hasn't just made up information, it said, Okay, based on the information I know, uh, I'm going to need to get back to you on that. So it leaves the gaps for me to fill in if I need to. But of course, I could feed it extra context. And then it says, would you be able to send me a few time slots that work for you next week? So it, it knows that somebody's trying to request a meeting and is actually trying to schedule that on our behalf. So it's given us like a 90% response that we could then go back to, send that response, edit a few things and we'd have a perfect response without having even read the email. The other use case that this is gonna tackle is actually taking all our invoices and uploading them to a certain folder. So this second email example here, you can see has been tagged with various things, including financial, uh, promotion, admin, et cetera. And it's recognized that this doesn't actually need a response. So we've not wasted our tokens by responding to or drafting a response to an email that doesn't need a response. But it's also taken the information, taken the invoices and uploaded them to our attachments folder. So without having to download the attachments and upload them, it's automatically taken those and popped it in our folder for us. So we're going to jump into the workflow now. And the first section we're going to focus on is how to get context aware responses. So when you're writing emails, you naturally understand the context, but AI doesn't naturally understand that. So what we've got to do is feed in the context. There might be previous messages in a thread that it has to understand the previous context before drafting a response, but it also wants to understand the context so it can give it correct labels in our inbox and we can sort that effectively. So we are monitoring it inbox every minute and we're taking those one at a time. We're then grabbing the message thread. So when you receive an email, it gives you the full thread or a Gmail, it gives you the full thread of those previous messages. But actually the context that we need needs to be stripped out from the latest message. You don't want it responding to a message that was sent uh, five messages ago in the thread or responding to your response in the thread. So if we open up get thread messages here, what we can see is we are pulling from our trigger the thread ID in order to actually just understand the context of the full thread. And you can see on the right hand side, it's got a snippet here of the email that we've already looked through. We then want to just pull the latest message ID. So again, we're only interested or the, the response part of the LLM call is only interested in pulling the information from the latest message because we're not going to respond to previous messages. We're only responding to the latest context. So we strip that out at that point. I'm going to jump into section two now, which is critical for the email infrastructure. 
and pulls all your labels dynamically from your inbox. So you only need to update it in one place. In the next two minutes, we're going to cover exactly how to do that. But before that, if you're liking the content and finding it valuable, then you can find the content and more content like this, as well as the template for this workflow in our school community, which is linked below. It's full of other business owners who face the exact same problems as you and troubleshoot their problems together, as well as use these workflows to get one step ahead with their business and scaling that using AI. So the second section we'll cover now, pulls labels dynamically. You don't want to be constantly updating in two places all the email labels. So every email that gets processed here, we want to label it for every email that comes in. We just want it to be assigned to a certain category so that when we look through on a summary level every day, we understand if it's a financial email, if it's got attachments, if it's promotions and we don't really need to read it. And this is exactly what this does. So we've got a get labels node, which dynamically pulls from our inbox, all of our labels. So you can see on the right hand side here, we've got all of the labels that are in our inbox, but most of them are system messages like trash, draft, spam, inbox. And we actually want to strip those out before we start assigning the labels. I've put this node in here, which is just a simple if no, which is if the user has created the label, i.e. the get labels type is not system, or then we will pull that. So you can see I've actually only got seven labels for this test example. We've got action required, promotion, financial, processed complaint, and urgent. We then just want to combine those so that when we're passing that context into our LLM, it knows exactly what labels to assign to it. This next part is the most critical. So if you're going to stick around for a couple more minutes, I'm going to show you exactly the prompt we use to assess our email and work out whether it needs a response, has any attachments, is urgent, and assigns labels. This is the crux and the power of this template. So stick around for the next two minutes. I'll show you exactly how that's done. So we'll open up back up the flow and we're going to go into this assess email LLM prompt. So as you can see from the notes here, it chooses the most appropriate categories and labels and assesses whether to reply, whether it's urgent, whether there are attachments to upload, and then finally determines the labels that we need to label the email. So if I go into this LLM chain here, we're passing in some really important context. So we're passing in the latest message text so that it understands what exactly it might be responding to. We pass in the subject as that often gives you clues to uh, what you need to reply to. We pass in who it's from and the dates and then various other things like were there attachments in the initial trigger? And we find that out through binary files, whether there was a binary object or wasn't. We pass in the category labels so that it can determine the most appropriate labels and label it. And then we also don't want to relabel it with the same categories. So we pass in the current labels in order to ignore those, as well as giving it the whole context of the previous thread. If it's not got the context of the previous thread, the answer may be completely different. So if it knows the previous thread answers, then it will definitely give a better answer. And then the most comprehensive prompt in this whole workflow we're about to go through in the next 45 seconds is the email assessment agent. So we effectively give it a role about analyzing specific incoming me emails and giving it certain characteristics. And that gives us the same criteria that we mentioned. So do we need to reply to it? Is it urgent? Does it have attachments? We effectively give it uh, steps to go and analyze each email text and classify the email with the labels that it thinks it should be given and labeled in our Gmail and also whether it needs the response or needs to be uh, flagged as urgent and various things like that. So we tell it the inputs, we give it some constraints and those constraints normally are mostly about making sure that it's not making things up and it's taking verbatim exactly what we've given it 
and responding with the context that it has and is allowed to. And then finally, it gives it uh, some constraints around what it should return in order for us to classify it in the next stages. There's really comprehensive uh, logs here where I've given it some really good examples of why in some cases you would respond, why you wouldn't, what things are urgent in my use case. And this is really important for everyone watching because this is the point at which you can change this and update this. The prompt works already. You can update it to match exactly your needs and your circumstances for what you consider urgent. Um, I won't go through the full prompt, but you can grab the template in the school community below, but effectively it has all the different criteria flagged out in this prompt here. In the later stages of the flow, we're effectively processing the emails. So we've passed each email through and you can see from the output that we've got a various metadata in our JSON format. So to reply, true, urgent, false, date related, true, various actions that will determine the next steps of that email. And then we've got a switch node, which I've called action root, which decides, do we need to draft a response? Do we have any attachments to upload to our Google Drive? Is it urgent and therefore notify us? And finally, assign labels. That's always the final stage we do so that we can loop back around and we know that we assign labels to every single email. So the first most critical step is drafting a response. So again, if a response is required, i.e. to reply is true, then we send it to create reply text, which again is an LLM chain connected to Claude 3.5 Sonnet. We're passing in the subject and the message here. So just a small amount of context, but we know we're replying to the most recent message only. And if you pass the whole thread in, it will tend to reply to the whole thread. And then what we've done is just put some simple guidelines here around tone and style, our structure in which we write emails, and you can tailor this exactly to the way you write and actually give it some really clear examples of how you'd respond to certain emails. And this would perform way better than this template. But for now, we've just put in some general rules, which actually perform really well. I've tested it a bunch on different emails and actually performing really well. And then this is a really interesting one, which I haven't seen much elsewhere, but we have, if there's a yes, no question, then we actually get it to draft both a yes and a no so that we can just go into our email drafts and delete the one we don't need and then send the one we, we do want. And then we've critically told it, don't invent information, only put in things that you know from your context. And it's for us to feed in relevant context. Finally, that creates a craft draft output in our inbox for us to see exactly like we showed at the start. So you can see the draft here. And it's even has given us a note. This response assumes we need to schedule a meeting. I've kept it somewhat vague since the information wasn't provided. So it's even given us a note for when we refer to our drafts so that we understand the context in which it's responded in this way, which is really, really helpful. On to uploading attachments. So this is a very simple flow, but if we detect that there are binary files in our initial trigger, then what I'm gonna do is just basically upload it to a Google Drive. And we're doing that so that we can capture all of our invoices and any other attachments that get sent to us by email or have a log and we don't have to go trawling through our email for our attachments. So we use this code node, or firstly we use this attachment to work out whether the binary object exists in the trigger. We then grab the binary data so that we can pass it through to our uh, Google Drive. We then don't want to, if we end up processing an email twice, which we shouldn't, but if we do, then we don't want attachments to be uploaded multiple times. So what we're first doing is checking if it exists in our Google Drive first. If it doesn't exist, we will upload it. If it does exist, then no action is taken. And the way we label this is effectively using the date, who it's from, and then the original file name. 
And this gives us a really clear overview of who sent us an attachment when we received it. So if we want to go back through our emails to find the attachment or to find the context with it, then we can uh, trace that back immediately. But you can see we've uploaded examples here from an invoice that's been sent to us. If an email is urgent, you obviously want to be able to see that. So because the fact this is taking us a couple of minutes a day and we're no longer looking at our email uh, regularly, you might just want to alert yourself if there's certain urgent emails coming in. So actually it identifies from the criteria we defined in the prompt and we've set up a Telegram node here that if it's urgent, it will send us a Telegram message and it will say urgent email from this person. This is the subject, this is a summary. So it even gives a summary of exactly what the email is saying and then gives us a direct link back to our email. So it's super quick to get from Telegram back to our email. Now, all you need to do is set this up is have the Telegram bot installed. And there are plenty of tutorials on how to do that, but then insert your chat ID from that chat that you wanna send it to, and you'll have this set up. You could put an alternate method on here, like WhatsApp, Slack, and actually that would work just fine too. You can take the same details there. And then last but not least, we are categorizing all of our emails with labels. So what we do is we aggregate all the labels that were passed through and assess to be true, i.e. if it's a promotional email, it would be tagged with a promotion label. We aggregate those together and we assign all of the labels that have come through. And you can see here two IDs of labels that it's determined will be assigned there. And those are labels corresponding to certain names like promotion or financial in my inbox. And, but those have been pulled through dynamically, so we never need to update them. We just need to update them in our inbox if we want more. And then finally, we assign it a single label, which I've got in my inbox, and you need to make sure you also do to make sure this runs correctly, which is processed. That process label just tells me that it's already responded or already taken action on those emails. And that's just like a sense check for me. You can see both of the emails that have been sent through that we tested are both labeled process, so I know exactly what's going on with them. Thanks so much for watching. If you like the template and want to get access to it, then check out our school community below where there's a ton of business owners like you trying to automate all of their business like this.